Beloved, it's good to be with you. It's good to have the opportunity again in this hour to come and spend some time with you. One can hardly think and keep track of time. And I think you will understand what I'm about to say in how quickly time is flying by. Sweet spirit. 
grace and mercy to bow, Lord, in adoration, in awe of your splendor. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this time that we have again to be able, Lord, to gather in your name. That we have the opportunity, Lord, and are privileged to listen to this broadcast again today. Come receive the highest blessing and honor us the strength and the ability to remain standing in these times. It's dark, it's evil. Thank you that we know that you're there. And that you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us, and that you carry us through every single moment of the day. Here we are now, gathering together in your name. blessed, be glorified in Jesus' name.
your face.
today on in your darkest moment and I believe that there's a lot who most probably may nod their heads positively hearing the title of our message for today in your darkest moment a moment where we have felt alone a moment where you feel that there is nothing and no one is there to understand and to give hope. I wonder if I should ask, and it was possible for you and me to communicate, and I ask you to recall some of your darkest moments that you have ever had to face. I think if we had an open line, it would have not stopped for a day or two. But you see, in our darkest moment, there is one thing that is for sure. And that is that the trouble that we are facing will not always last. It does come to an end. It has come to a point where things simply just stop and we can feel it's possible to breathe again. The only consolation, however, that comes with your darkest hour is the fact that Jesus warned us about it. When he said, and this is where I want you to turn with me to John chapter 16, and I'll be reading verse 33 for us. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted to be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory abiding. If we look at the word tribulation, that is being used in this verse, it is literally translated to be pressure. 
And figuratively, it means affliction or distress. Something that at the current moment, I am sure of that we have experienced that a lot up to now. There is a translation that translates the verse as follows, and it says, In this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. You see, Jesus promised us that the darkness would come. Trouble would come. Trials will come. But then on top of that, and this is the beauty of it all, he then offers comfort. And that is what you and I know and understand. You see, the thing about darkness and trouble is that it will not last for always. The psalmist so beautifully comes in Psalm 30 verse 5 and, and he says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Sometime back I also shared on this where I have sung this to you. Joy comes in the morning. The night time brings darkness and, and, and that's overwhelming, it's bleak and and encumbering to us physically, mentally, and spiritually, it feels like it simply just drains you. But I want to come and assure you today that what is important, there is always hope. And in the darkest moment, the dark, darkest hour that, that you may experience and, and, and that you may encounter, what is important is that you must understand God will never God will never ever put more on you than you are able to bear. Isn't this great? And once we understand this, once we can grasp this, we will accept when trials and tribulations come. Physically, emotionally, mentally, it's there. And we've got to go through this. Every test that I've come and that you and I have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. But God keeps his promise and he will not allow you to be tested beyond, the Bible teaches us that, beyond your power to remain firm. And, and, and we can read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. See, at the time you are put to the test, he will give you the strength to endure it and so provide you with a way out. He never leaves us just there to, to carry out on our own. He never. You understand? You see, darkness, trouble, pain, disappointment and discouragement are a part of life. We cannot just excuse ourselves and think that we are not going to go through this. We will not encounter such things. But these things are part of living in a, in a sin-cursed world. But one thing that I am sure of and confident of is that God is our burden bearer. And if you and I can understand that, and we grasp this, it, it makes us simply just to find ourselves in a place where it will work out for the better. There's a beautiful song I was a very young boy when I heard my dad ministering this during a Sunday evening service and what would follow was just astonishing and perhaps you are now there burdened doesn't matter what the problem may be beautiful song that comes and 
It says, if the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along. Just remember in his word how we feed the little bird. Take your burden to the Lord. Take your burdens to the Lord. dark moment and hour that you may experience God wants to be present he wants to be there he wants us to understand that the people who walk in darkness will see a great light and for those who live in a land of deep darkness a light will shine that is the promise that he gave unto us you and I do not have to worry we do not have to fret. We do not have to fear. God uses tests and trials and darkness and trouble in order to use us and prepare us for his kingdom. But Andre, isn't it unfair? No, it's not. And this is how you and I are tested with trials and tribulations. What a great promise. What a great promise. That he will be there. That he will never leave us. That he will never forsake us. What a promise to understand. But you see, the question is, we've got to ask ourselves, what are these things doing to us? Why does this happen? Why will there be moments of dark? Why will there be a moment where I feel, but I'm alone? No, you're not. He's there. You hear me? He's there. What do these things do to us? It refines us. It refines us. Zechariah 39 says, Refine them as one refined silver and test them as gold is tested. It refines us. That's why we are going through this. To see if we are really the salt of the earth. To see whether we are the true light that will shine in a dark and an evil world. You see, these moments of, of darkness, they serve as a proof to our enemy, the devil, and to the world that we are the children of God. And listen to what 1 Peter 5.10 says, So after you have suffered a while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. Do you hear this, church? 
It's but for a moment, it's for a little while that it will take place. It's going to change. Rest assured, when Jesus comes, it's going to change. You see, what do they do? They test and trials bring you blessing in the long run. Those tests and dark moments and dark hours that we experience, it brings blessings to us in the long run. Have you noticed, if you read Job, what happened through all of that which Job came, the Bible says that his end was better than his beginning. He was double blessed in everything that he lost. Isn't that great? See, that causes us to realize that God wants us to know him more. We need to depend on him. This is not just for, for God not being in, in control or wants, us, wants to see us suffering. No, no. The Bible says that, that even Jesus learned obedience to his father by the things that he suffered and did he suffer. We are complaining about the cross we have to take up, but we forget the cross that he took. What a burden. And in his darkest moment, he cried out, Father, if possible, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me. You think the Father ignored him? You think the Father just left him really alone? The Father was there all the time. He helped him. You see, it's all about him and, and our relationship with him. That's why we have to go through these things. That's why you and I will, will, will suffer. That's why we will, we will have some dark moments. We, we will have that. It's not easy. But he never said it's going to be easy. He would have never, never said that. You see, the final and last promise for your darkest moment is that God is with you. So we can't give up. We can't give up, beloved. God is with us. He says that I, I'm there all, all the time. Look up. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. He's so grateful and, and he's so willing to forgive you and me. And that's why if, if you and I can just understand that, that quitting is no option. Do you hear me? So many people just give up. They quit and they say it's too hard. It's too difficult. But you have learned, if you have learned and I have learned what it is to enter into his rest, it becomes more bearable. It becomes possible knowing that even in my darkest moment, he is there. Do you hear me? And, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry if, if, if you, you feel that I'm a person who does always just bring out the, the, the doomy things and just add to the dilemma and, and always refer to that it's not going to get better. It's not. It's going to increase. The sooner you and I understand and grasp, the better for us. Do you hear me? The sooner you and I start not to complain and, and groan and moan about all of these things, and, and, and just accept that God is busy testing us. God is busy um, refining us. Mm -hmm. Giving us the opportunity to grow and become stronger in Him. Remember what I said sometime again in the beginning of the year when we started again broadcasting? I said that the theme for 2021 is what? Growing from maturity to perfection. Growth is not always easy. Can you remember the growing pains when you grew up? 
if it's not growing in height, it's growing pains when it comes to the teeth. A lot of things changed. We adapted to that. We accepted it. We learned to live with it. It's the same in our, in our spiritual lives. Exactly the same. So I'm here today to come and tell you, quitting is not an option. And, and, and I know, I know, we, we may ask why. And I will tell you why quitting is not an option. See if you can get the answer. See if you can get the answer. When I sing it. So I'm saying, quitting is not an option. You ask why? Simply because. not an option because God is with you. Emmanuel, God with us. That's the promise. He is the great God. I am, I'm talking about the creator God, the one who spoke and everything that you see came into being. I'm talking about that God. So even in your darkest moment, he's there. He will be with you. He will never leave you and never will he forsake you. His word promises that. I'm not talking about the God of the Muslim, the God of the Hindus. I'm not talking about any other God as but Jesus Christ, the creator of heaven and earth, who promises that he will be with you and me forever. We are not alone. He's refining us. If you have studied pottery, you will find that the hardest part is, is the molding and then he throws away that part which doesn't belong there. And the hardest part is when he puts us in the furnace, in the oven. Because that determines the quality of the clay. Come on. Don't have time to talk to you about that. Oh, you see, he is the one who was and is and is to come. That God. This is the same God who told Moses I will never leave you. It's the same God who told Joshua, as I was with my servant Moses, I will be with you. The same God who told Abraham to leave everything that he knew, saying, I'm going to take you to a place, into a land that I will show you. I will multiply you. He's that God. In your darkest moment, he's that God who promises, I will never leave you. And neither will I forsake you. He's that God. He, he's the God who, who's faithful. He's the God who's trustworthy. He's the God who is good. He's the same God who was with my mom, with my dad, with my brother, with my grandparents, with those who passed on. He's the same God who was with them. And he's the same God who is still with me. Oh, I get so excited. You see, our God will never leave us, neither forsake us. Not now. In your darkest moment. Never, ever will he leave you. He will be there. You see, 
Where would you go anyway? To whom will we go? <laughs> Again. <laughs> Just love it. Beautifully the song says. Live. Because he's with you, he is still with you, and he will always be with you. Isn't that beautiful? You see, Peter asked him, Lord, where else? Where else is there to go? You are the only one that gives eternal life. The psalmist says, he asks the question, who have I in heaven but you? We've got no one else. We've got Jesus and Jesus alone. So if, if you and I look at it and, 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 we, and we take into consideration that Jesus did warn us, he said, I have told you these things, speaking and addressing his disciples. Do you think it was just the once off? Just for his disciples and not for us, not applicable on us today? No. No, 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 no. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In my darkest moment, I have peace. In the world, you and I will have tribulation and distress and suffering in the world. But in him, peace. Be confident. Be undaunted. Be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. I have overcome that tribulation and distress and suffering. And at that point in time, Jesus didn't even die as yet. But he told them, I've done it. It's done. It's finished in me. My conquest is accomplished. 
by victory abiding. You see, darkness soon shall pass. Because tomorrow, when the sun rises, each cloud has its silver lining. Our oh, beloved, you see, the songwriter says, soon and very soon, we are going to see our King. Then our darkest moment will all be forgotten. Isn't that great? We will be able to, to sing, look what the Lord has done. He brought me through all of this trouble and darkness. He has rescued my soul, has given me a song. He gave me new hope. He gave me new life. Yes, Lord, even though it's difficult and even though, Lord, in this darkest moment, it felt I was alone. You were not. He was there. He's there all the time. Waiting. Songwriter says, waiting patiently in line. He's there all the time. You hear me? songwriter says in the dark of the midnight have I oft heard my voice while the storm
Stay blessed and Maranatha.